Hello and welcome to Film Friday, number 17 for May 21st, 2021. My name is Darlene Tate. Just a reminder, if you like these updates, please hit like and subscribe down below. Today, we'll look at local film news along with some Leo Award nominations and the Short Circuit Film Festival along with the CineSpark Pitch Competition, which all took place last night. And then we'll take a look at the Pacific Opera offering of two productions that were filmed by the amazing talent that is David Malashev. They are available for viewing free tonight at 7.30 and we'll talk about them a little more shortly. And finally, we'll spend some time chatting with Arnold Lim, a well-known filmmaker and photojournalist from our area. In studio production news, we have Rise and Shine Benedict Stone by Front Street Pictures. Now the book is set in a quaint English village and revolves around Benedict Stone, who is a mild-mannered, risk-averse jewelry maker. After his wife leaves him, his plucky 16-year-old niece, Gemma, shows up in his life and helps him become more creative. But there are secrets. Again, this synopsis is about the book and we have yet to see how closely the screenplay follows it. It will be filming in this region. According to some production list sites, we are expecting to see some scenes from the Netflix horror, The Last Will and Testament of Charles Abernathy, filmed here. Produced by Paul Schiff and directed by Alejandro Bruges, on the eve of his 75th birthday, billionaire Charles Abernathy invites his four estranged children back home out of fear that tonight, someone or something is coming to kill him. To ensure his family will help protect him from whatever's coming, Abernathy puts each of their inheritances on the line. They'll get nothing if he's found dead by dawn. And from producer Jane Charles comes Rescued by Ruby, which we've spoken of several times in the past. The production is going to camera in our region on June 2nd. Along with this, I want to say congratulations to Jane and the entire VC Andrews series team who garnered so many nominations. They are up for Best Dramatic Series, Cinematography, Editing, Musical Score, Production Design, Costume Design, Twice, which is our own Ken Shapkin, Makeup, Casting, Supporting Male Role, Three Times, Supporting Female Role, and lead male role. So we have no date yet on when the Leos will take place, but I'm betting the entire VC Andrews series team will be watching. In other Leo award news, three local short films have also been nominated, including Lucid, which is up for four awards, including best short film with direction by Deanna Milligan, cinematography by Ramsey Fendel, and musical score by Marta, Jack Hubeck, McKeever. Lucid was also the winner of the CineSpark Pitch Competition in 2019, and you can watch it right now at the Short Circuit Film Festival. Links will be provided. Another local favorite, Babalu by Jim Knox, is up for Best Musical Score in a Short Film and nominated is Matthew Rogers. And the recent winner of Best BC Film at the Cinevic Short Circuit Film Festival, Alone in the Arctic Skies, is up for Best Sound by Noah Meyer. While I know a lot of people, I don't know everyone. So if you are aware of any productions or individuals who have been given a Leo nod this year, please pop me an email to filmfriday at darlingtate.com so we can cheer them on. Arnold Lim and Anna Delara's All in Madonna is also up for seven Leo awards. And we're gonna to talk to Arnold more about that shortly. In Victoria, we are very fortunate to be able to catch a Pacific Opera production filmed by David Malashev and available tonight at 7.30 p.m. Free of charge, the links will be provided. You can take a trip back in time with Megan Latham by peeking in on the antics of 1920s New York City Cafe Society in The Italian Lesson and 1950s Boston for an unforgettable visit to Julia Child's Kitchen in Bon Appetit. It'll be a show-stopping night of music, Dante's Inferno, and chocolate cake. Please tune in. On Wednesday evening, Cinevic, the Society of Independent Filmmakers, held its annual CineSpark pitch competition, which was won by Sarah Nicole Foucher. 
Congratulations, Nicole, and we look forward to chatting with you next week. Now we'll jump to the Cinevic Short Circuit Awards from last night, but we are going to return to the Leo nominations following this. For the Cinevic Short Circuit Film Festival, the Outstanding Art Direction went to the film Orworm or Earworm. Outstanding Sound went to Alone in the Arctic Skies. Outstanding Music went to Harana or Serenade. Outstanding Cinematography went to My Name is Mudu. Outstanding Editing went to Turf Nation. Outstanding Performance went to Ashwini Mason for her role in My Name is Mudu. Outstanding Screenplay went to Josephine Stewart Tehu for Annie. Outstanding Director went to Vaughn and Connor Gaston for Orworm. Outstanding Documentary, Keepers of the Shy Place. Outstanding Animated Film went to The Coin. Outstanding International Film, My Name is Muju. Outstanding BC Film went to Alone in the Arctic Skies. Right now, I would like to move on to my chat with Arnold Lim. Everyone in our film community knows Arnold, who is one of our most talented filmmakers and one of the kindest people you could ever know. And I'm very thankful to count him as one of my good friends. Please welcome Arnold Lim. So Arnold, welcome to Film Friday. And I'm excited to have you on. Uh, it's always a pleasure to speak to you, Darlene. And I'm so happy. This is my first time on Film, film Friday, and I'm really <laughs> excited to be here. Well, um, the one thing I know for sure is I don't see you often enough anymore. You're so busy with so many projects. So uh, if it took a, a little bit of a news story to get you on here, then I'm all up for that. So uh, first, I want to say congratulations. That was some big news out of Leo last night. Thank you so much. Like, really, um, I know that uh, all the filmmakers say this, but I really believe this to be true. Like, I think that um, uh, Vancouver Island hits above its weight class in terms of the amount of talent and film talent and artistic talent that we have here. And um, I think this is um, a small nod to all the amazing artists that we have on Vancouver Island. And any project is only as strong as the people that are working on it, like anything. And um, this is um, this is a thumbs up to um, the amazing cast and crew um, that worked on all of Madonna. Really, not oh. a reflection of just uh, one or two people. It's it's everyone. The team. Well, uh, I'm going to steal that. I love that that Vancouver Island keeps hitting above its weight class. That's great. By Arnold quote Arnold Lim hitting above its weight class. I think that's it's great. true. Um, so, so if you have time for us, I'd like uh, you to give me a little bit of background. How were you introduced to the All In Madonna script? How did that come about? Um, that's, um, that's, uh, that's a very good question. So I was introduced to the script actually um, by being introduced to the writer. I was searching for a script actually in 2015 and 16 to submit to um, the Telephone Talent to Watch program, which at that point was called the Micro Budget Program. And um, I was introduced to a very talented young writer. Her name was Susie Winters. She went to University of Victoria and uh, we met through Maureen Bradley, who is uh, a, a, an associate professor at UVic for the screenwriting program, who is absolutely amazing and someone that I look up to very much. And um, yeah, we uh, connected from there and we were fortunate enough to um, develop the, the, the film through the features, uh, the National Screen Institute's Features First program. We got a funding from Bravo Fact to make a short. And then we used those uh, those materials together to apply for the telephone talent to watch, and uh, we got it. So we were so fortunate. It, it was a long journey, and I'm skipping over a few steps because <laughs> along the way we actually got um, we didn't get the grant for one year, and then um, we applied again uh, again later on, and then we ended up getting it. So. Right. It took quite a few years, but we got there. Now, the uh, the short film, gosh, it's been a, a while since I've uh, seen it or heard about it. Um, how did that do on the festival circuit? Were you submitting it to festivals? Or? 
I was. Um, I didn't submit it to quite as many festivals as I had hoped to. Like the way that uh, we looked at the short film version was that we were making it with a very specific goal in mind. And that's something that I always think about before I make anything, especially a short film. Like I have a goal in mind. This is used for this thing. And for me, that film was to get the pitch off and try to get the feature made. So that was a specific goal that I had in mind. So when we used that, we used the materials, we used what we had, and we made the pitch materials that we were able to submit to Telefilm. Uh, and then we were able to get that project. Um, unfortunately, in some ways, and I feel bad about even saying this because we had a lot of wonderful people work on the project, but um, we weren't quite able to uh, focus as much of our time on promoting that, um, uh, the mm -hmm. short film version. We did, we submitted uh, to a number of film festivals and we were fortunate to get, we played at um, the Edmonton International Film Festival um, uh, among uh, some others. Um, and um, so it had a, a nice little run uh, but um, really, the folk, we, we had focused on a particular goal and we used those um, to really be our northern, northern star on how we would approach it. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's kind of why, unfortunately, it just kind of fell underneath a little bit under the, the feature there. Yeah. Now, um, so last night it was announced that All in Madonna uh, was up for seven different nominations uh, from the Leo Awards, uh, including For Yourself. Anna Delara and Robin Chan, who were the producers. So you're up for best feature and yourself as director. Cinematography, um, they've given a nod to Daniel Carruthers, who it would make a nice pair for Daniel, I think on his mantle, if he gets this one. And uh, the musical score by, uh, musical score rather by our beloved Gilles Maillet. Casting nods went to Lynn Carroll and Jackie Casey. Supporting performance to Melanie Rose Wilson, who was amazing, as was your um, uh, lead female actress, Celine Stubel, who we all adore. So seven, I mean, the last time I think I saw seven nominations going to one film on the island, you can correct me if, I, if you remember, was The Devout. Yes, I think Devout um, might have even gotten nine. But oh, I don't. I, I, I don't remember exactly. I think I, I actually talked about it recently with uh, Connor, um, and um, yeah. So that is was the standard bearer, and it still is. So, um, you know, I'm very, uh, you know, really again, I'm really fortunate to have the opportunity to um, make a feature. I, I was privileged to have that opportunity, and really, this is um, this really does speak to a lot of people that don't have their names on any nominations, but really buoyed the film for everyone from the PAs to um, to people doing all the little things to, to, to make it happen to the locations. And um, this was a Vancouver Island project through and through. We really had to beg, borrow, steal and steal a lot in order to um, to to make this film happen, because with a hundred twenty five thousand dollar budget, um, you know, there's it's just so hard to make a feature. So. Well, it sounds like a lot of money, you know, um, a lot of the indie filmmakers around here making shorts for, you know, a few thousand dollars thinking, wow, 125,000. But you came out one day and kind of uh, compared it down to a per minute amount of money. Mm -hmm. and, and all of a sudden, I think reality hit everybody that, yeah, that's not that much money. No, it isn't. Actually, the, the short film version was actually on a per minute basis um, funded better than the feature film was. Um, yeah. So having said that, this is a first world problem. So I got to, to work exactly. on a feature. So thank you to Telefilm and the BC Arts Council as well. I, just because I am so curious about this right now. Um, from the time you laid eyes on the All in Madonna script mm -hmm. to the time you went to camera, um, what percentage of the script would you say roughly, what percentage of the script changed? I mean, once you hit pre-production, once you start, and, and, and even once you're out there shooting, um, you know, different things come up that require changes here and there. Mm -hmm. Percentage wise, what would you guesstimate the script change from beginning to end? Ooh, that's a very good question, and, and a good question that I wish Susie Winters, uh, the writer here, was here to answer. Um, she may have a little bit more clarity on it, but uh, from my perspective, I would say probably like 75% changed. Uh -huh. Like from the first time I laid yes. eyes on the script. Yes. Now the core, the the heart of the film was uh, was there, but 
the you know the script um in many ways is a living organism and it just kind of grows and grows and becomes what it is as as the the, the production develops and oh remember we got um, we first pitched it in 2016 didn't get the grant pitched it again in 2018 and got it in 2018 and then completed production by 2020 so in that's we're talking about four years so there's uh, there's a lot of blood sweat and tears that went into um you right. know working on all assets all aspects of the film and certainly there was a lot of change there so yeah. Yeah. thank you to the team and thank you for susie for helping with that well it's good to know because um I think I think writers, um, directors, they have to be open to that kind of collaboration and change, and which is one of the reasons I asked the question. Um, now, with your permission, I'd like to drop the trailer in so that people can see the trailer, which I have. Is that okay? It, absolutely. And for people who are not quite as familiar with All in Madonna, um, it's uh, when a 17-year-old girl learns some dark secrets about her father's past. She has to reconcile the father she thought she knew and the man he may actually be, correct? Yes, that's it, yeah. Okay, we're gonna drop that trailer in. Hey, Madonna, what's up with you? I wanna go to school. All I need is your, your signature and, and I'll take care of the rest. No. Class, I would like to introduce you to your new classmate. This is Madonna Croft. What the fuck do you think you're doing here? My dad was Phil Larson. So what? What the oh. fuck? What the Did you kill Lisa Larson's dad? I told you not to go to that place. That's Those kids question. run their fucking mouth off. My dad didn't kill Ed. You wanna bet? Yeah. I bet you when they find Ed, they don't find anything that links to my dad. Did you hear they're looking for Ed in the lake? Wouldn't be the first guy to go missing in Blue Lake. Heard you guys had a fight. So you think my dad's innocent? Maddie, do you think I could really kill someone? Before we let you go, because uh, people would shoot me if I didn't ask you the questions, uh, what's next? Well, <clears throat> thankfully, um... Uh, Telephone was gracious enough to give us uh, some development money to develop uh, the next feature that I hope to be working on. It's called the Bryce Lee story. And the um, story, the witch. It's called the Bryce Lee story. The Bryce, Bryce Lee, Lee story. Gotcha. Yeah, the Bryce Lee story, and um, it's a film that's going to be um, I uh, be very personal, I think, in, in many ways, um, and offers. Um, uh, you know, a different tone to the type of films that uh, I've made to the past, in the past, and, and All of Madonna has a really dark kind of mystery slash drama tone to it, and this film is going to be a little bit of um, kind of dramatic comedy, a little bit in the, uh, mm -hmm. the vein of an eighth grade, so um, I'm looking forward to that. I'm also working on a, a series with um, Claire Mulligan um, that I'm hoping to get off the ground at some point, and I have a short that I'm making in the fall. It's going to be it's called uh, My Name Is Arnold, and it's going to be uh, you know loosely based on some of my uh, my past growing up as a Korean Canadian in a very small rural community. Um, so that's going to be happening in the fall. So we're going to be looking for cast and crew for that. So if anyone is interested in working on that, please. Um, and uh, lastly, I'm working on a web series that is going to be going to camera in 2022 and the web series is called best friend me i'm producing it anna delara is directing it and so um you know if uh we have people watching uh film friday as i do um hopefully uh, there'll be some people out who would want to, to help and work on this project with us so that goes and just so everybody knows arnold Lim also has like a job so on top of everything you've just heard um you go to work every day 
Is there any big uh, photojournalism gigs coming up for you? Um, thankfully, um, again, uh, from the privileged position um, that I that I'm sitting in right now, I had the opportunity to keep my job during um, COVID-19, and um, so my my day job is as a photojournalist and video journalist working for the newspapers of Black Press, and yeah, so I will be heading off actually going to Tokyo for the Olympics, and. Um, Wow. I'm working on that very soon, so I'm excited to, for that uh, opportunity. So I'll be gone for that for a bit, and then I'll be back uh, uh, in time to spend a month in quarantine going either way, which is terrible. But Well, have you had your uh, shot yet? I just had my shot. So I had my first uh, inoculation and um, three days out from that. So um, that'll I'll only have one shot heading out, but uh, I'm glad to uh, to have even one shot. So. Well, Arm, okay, now I'm actually going to let you go because I do know you have a lot on your plate. And thank you so much for uh, being willing to give of your time and talk to us about all of this and uh, wish you just so much success. Thank you for doing Film Friday and, and congratulations to the other Leo nominations as well, including yeah. many from uh, from Vancouver Island. Yeah, um, we're going to be covering them over the next few editions, uh, all of the nominations, if, if possible. Okay, great. So, yeah. Thank you. Okay, Arnold. Nice talking to you. Okay. Always a pleasure, my friend. Thanks, Arnold. Yeah, we Talk have to, you to go soon. for lunch or, or, or something at some point. Something I'm here soon. whenever you have time. Okay. Chat okay. soon, my friend. Bye-bye. And that's it for another Film Friday. We have a long weekend coming ahead, so please enjoy yourselves, stay safe, and have some fun.